Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Renton Arb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, and the Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find these books, and uh, other fun stuff along the ways, too. Alright, so, yeah, let me see. Let me start with uh, some comments on recent YouTube videos that I posted. Um, John W. Part-Time Comics posted on my review of... Uh, Drumsticks of Doom, he posted up two horns like this. Yeah, so that was, thanks for that comment. And uh, yeah, Drumsticks of Ju Doom, uh, really awesome. And I'm so glad I backed issue two because I can't wait to pick up more of that and read more of that. And uh, yeah, that's cool stuff. So yeah, thanks for the comment, John W. Part-Time Comics. And uh, yeah, let's see, I'm wearing... Uh, skeletal ribs today because, um, you know, it's pretty close to Halloween, and why not? Cool stuff, huh? Right? And, uh, well, you can't really see my messy office because right now all you see is my print wall, but, uh, yeah, my office is a crazy mess right now. Um, still working on cleaning it up, but October's been crazy busy, but, uh, yeah, I, I'll get this cleaned up eventually and, uh, get back to working on my own comics stuff like that, so hopefully I uh, get that worked out on all that. I don't know why you need to hear that, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, October is insanely busy. Um, I know uh, a lot of people participate in the uh, Inktober or Drawtober, as you will, whichever you want to call it or participate in, but uh, yeah, October is just too crazy for me. Um, I, I've had a bunch of trees uh, blow down in the wind and had to take care of them. One even knocked into my neighbor's fence. So, hmm, that sucks. So yeah, I had to do a lot of tree trimming this week. Takes up a lot of time. Uh, fall, clean up leaves and all that and uh, winterizing the house, getting ready for winter and, you know, getting every yard, all the yard work done I can, you know, all that stuff. Not to mention it's birthday season at my house. I have, I have, uh, Two kids in September and two kids in October. A lot of birthdays and preparing for Halloween, all sorts of stuff. Halloween's a big deal here in our house anyway, in our family. Uh, we do cider and trick-or-treating and donuts and cookies and all sorts of fun stuff. Pumpkin carving, all that. Anyway, yeah, a lot of stuff going on, so I can't participate in Drawtober. Not to mention I got a full-time job and... Uh, Donating plasma two times a week, yeah, whatever. Anyway, this isn't the excuse show, so... But if you're wondering why I haven't participated in Drawtober or Inktober, that's why. Um, I might move it to a different month and, uh, I don't know, do it during the summer. That'll be fun to do a, a summer sketch... Yeah, sketch summer. I'll call, I'll call it... I'll work on the name. But yeah, sketching summer, that might be the fun... Be the thing to call it. And yeah, I'll see if my kids will get involved in that. Because here, why do just one month? Let's do two months of sketch summer. So, yep. That's that. No, I don't need to bring up any more of that. Anyway, what have you been watching? Me, I have been watching a show called Sprung. It's about a bunch of inmates that uh, get released because of COVID-19. And, uh, and the mishaps and whatnots that they get into during that. It's from the people who made My Name is Earl and Raising Hope. So good stuff. I love it. Um, it's really funny stuff. Check that out. Uh, we wrapped up She-Hulk as a, me and my daughters watch it together. So that's really cool. And I watched Star Trek Discovery on my own. So, you know, lately uh, my work, I work for the Wally World. Um, and they've given all their employees uh, Paramount+. Plus. So I'm checking out all the Star Trek I can before they decide to take that away. Because, you know, that's how it goes with uh, where I work. They like to take things away. And I wanted to bring up on, uh, on Kickstarter, when you do your descriptions of your comics and everything, please put down the page count on your, uh, on your Kickstarter campaign. Um, yeah, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but for me... If I'm, like, back in it and you're like, you got it listed for $25 for a comic book, uh, I'm going to want to know how many pages there are, because paying $25 for a 25-page comic just seems crazy to me. 
Um, that's like a dollar a page. But yeah, please list your page count and uh, make it easier for some of us because if you're listing your comic as $25 and, uh, and I see that it's like a 48 page or 56 page book, I'm going to be like, yeah, that seems worth it. But I don't know, $25 for a 25 page comic, that's a little crazy for me. And please, and thank you to everybody who does put on their social medias and make it easier for people like me to find out who you are. Because when I, when I post these reviews, I like to post them with uh, your social media tags. That way uh, you could see it. Because, I mean, if somebody reads my comic, I want them to tag me. And I want to know what they, I want to know if they hated it or liked it or what they thought I could improve on. All that kind of stuff. So... Please, when you're uh, doing that, just for me, put your uh, social medias on there. And uh, while we're talking about reading my own comic book, um, I would love it if you read my comic book, which is Peter Pan the Vampire. Um, I have three issues, and I would love to love to hear what you say or think or type or tweet out, Facebook, whatever, Instagram. I want to know what you think about Peter Pan the Vampire comics. So yeah, send me a message and say, hey, uh, maybe you didn't see this because I posted it on Instagram and I know you don't check out Instagram, but I read your comic and this is what I thought and wrote about it. Whatever. Uh, yeah. So check out my comics. They are free digitally. You can download them all, one, two, and three, digitally to your phone for nothing. Uh, just boost up my algorithm and... Uh, yeah, download them for me. Really make my day and download the, or don't download. Order the physical copy and get it signed, or I mean sent to you. If you want to get one signed, uh, message me and I will work out a Venmo or a PayPal and I can get it to you signed. So yeah, uh, I, I print my comics through Kablam. They are awesome and uh, yeah, I bring up every opportunity I can to uh, let you know about Kablam. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> and uh, my comics, Kablam also has their sister site, IndiePlanet.com. That's where you can find Peter Pan the Vampire comics. Here's a postcard thing that I drew of Peter Pan the Vampire. With that, uh, if you do order a signed copy, I will send you one of those for free. Anyway, okay, that's enough about that. Let's get what you came here for, uh, the reviews. All right, first up on my reviews is I Am Hexed, number I Am Hexed number four. This is the fourth and final issue of I Am Hexed. They currently have a Kickstarter running for uh, the trade. Issues one through four collected into one volume. So I will tell you more about that later when we get to uh, the Kickstarter campaign, uh, cor the campaign corner section of my show but I am hexed awesome read uh, very good stuff it's about uh, a world where uh, witches have come out and been out in the open for as long as there's been an America and uh, this is a very political look at what would happen if witches were in our environment and had to coexist with us really good stuff um, let me give you some credits here while I'm at at it. This is written by uh, Kirsten Thompson, illustrated by Amagoya Aguirre, lettered by Taylor Espo, Esposito, and cover is by Paulina Ganuchow. Uh, sorry if I'm messing up your names. There is an exclusive cover by Jen St. Orange. Ange, and I did not get that one, obviously. This is the cover by uh, Paulina. Edited by James Emmett. Director of production is Jessica Gentile. Gentile. And assistant editor and graphic designer is David Rodriguez. Special thanks to The Coven, Bex Glendingding, Blending Inc., and Yoshi, Yoshi Tani. Ryan Farley, and Elaine Grace. All right, so yeah, uh, I Am Hexed, love this story, issues one through four. 
I was very pleased with how, what they did with it. And uh, the art inside is amazing. I love it. Wow, that is a super glossy cover. And uh, yeah, I love, I like that they put the uh, behind the scenes on how they got their sketches and ideas for the pages. Stuff like that. But yeah, very good story. Resolved really well. And uh, I can't wait to see what else these, uh, these fine folks do. I think this was done by Rocket Ship Entertainment, but I am not entirely certain if that's the truth. I'm not finding anything. Oh yeah, and my name is on the thank you page as Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics, so that's cool. Uh, that is a big thank you page too. They had, well that's actually three pages of thank yous. So yeah, they had a pretty good turnout on backers. That's awesome. And yeah, I will tell you more about the Kickstarter that is running right now for I Am Hexed, the volume. Very pleased with the story. And, uh, yeah, can't wait to tell you more about that. And can't wait to see more from that creative team. Next up on my list is a comic called Make Believe. Make Believe is... Written by Ryan Little, Little, art by Aaron Enderza, Ederza, and lettered by Nikki Powers, edited by Cody Colombe. Main cover is by Aaron Enderza, the interior artist, and it has variant covers by Marco DeFilo, DeFilo, and also Laura Knight. Logo is by Chelsea Dyer. So, Make Believe here is also it's also currently on Kickstarter for the second issue. This is a good sized book. I think that feels like a 40 or 50 something page book. Is it numbered? Nope. It is not numbered. But this is the story of a world where uh, where role playing games are a little more high tech. They actually have um Let's see, they actually have, what are those things that go in your eyes called? Um, contacts. Oh my gosh, that was dumb. So they have, a, this is a world where contacts are made with uh, ARs, alternate realities, and you can put these into your eye and suddenly you can see things around. Like if you go to a store, you can see merchants for um like bows and arrows and swords and stuff like like if you were playing Zelda and you go into the thing and they give you a potion to live longer or you can buy extra boomerangs and arrows stuff like that so it, I thought that was a pretty cool twist on it and uh, yeah you can see things that are not there only the people with the contacts and the that are playing the games can see them and uh, that's what this game's about or this this comic is about is about games and uh, finding treasures. See, like that. The other people at this rave or high school party can't see that, but these guys with the contacts, they're like, they go to a high school party just because they want to get this treasure chest and uh, accomplish the game and stuff. Really good stuff. Um, Ryan Little, the writer of this, it, he does some awesome stuff. I've read his comics, um, Super Scouts, and what else? Ever read by him. Um, I know I've got a couple comics from Ryan Little, but now I'm blanking on them. Oh my gosh. Help me, help me. I'm struggling. Yell at your screen. Um, yeah, anyway, Ryan Little, he does a lot of good stuff that I have backed and uh, <clears throat> all that. Um, what else? Oh my gosh. But yeah, Ryan Little, he's also, uh, he's also working for Marvel now. He uh, did some I Am Groot shorts episodes. And he is currently working on some uh, What If episodes for the Season 2. So I can't wait to see that. And I wonder if I'll be able to tell his flavor from each episode. Whatever. Stuff like that. But yeah. Make Believe from Press Plastic Sword Press. Really good stuff. Uh, issue 2 is on Kickstarter right now. I'll bring that up more in my Kickstarter corner section. Really pleased with this. So glad I'm back in Issue 2. So glad I backed this one. Oh, also, there is a thank you page. And uh, Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics is on that page as well. 
So, good stuff. Very good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm not really into D&D, &D, but, man, the way they play it on here, or the way they feature it, show it, portray it, really well, and I like it. And good stuff. <clears throat> and more stuff that's currently on Kickstarter right now. Worlds Away issue one and issue two is on Kickstarter right now. So Worlds Away number one is, oh, where's the credits page here? Oh, the credits is on the back. All right, that's cool. Credits here are uh, Damien Beckton is the writer. Christian Prunsti is the illustrator, artist from Italy, and Luana Cristini is the colorist from Brazil. Reed Hinckley Barnes is a comic letterer, and Devin R. Scott is the also a writer, editor, and creator. And Marco Del Forno is says he's an incredible artist based in Italy. Okay, I don't know how many different people illustrated this issue. It all felt like one. But World's Away is the story about um, two women. One is a mother, one's a daughter, and they are stranded on a deserted planet, and they're being chased by something that it doesn't allude to you yet what's going on. And they're trying to find their father, Really cool art, very kinetic, and uh, awesome art. And uh, they use these suits to uh, fight and survive, but then there suddenly shows up is an alien wizard, sorceress lady, and she, it's not known why she wants to fight them or destroy them yet, but we'll find that one out in the next issue. So cool stuff, really cool stuff, um, really kinetic art. Really happy with the art and uh, story. It's good stuff. And uh, yeah, Kickstarter is going October of 2022, which that's right now. And I will tell you more about that later. So very well done and uh, pleased with that. Then there is some other stuff. What is this here? Oh, so this is some previously pages. Like, so... I guess they gave it a, a first try, and uh, that's what that looked like. But now it's done a lot of growing since then, obviously, but still pretty cool. So Worlds Away, number one. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, and that that one came with a sticker. That's in the uh, poly bag, so I'll have to stick that on the box that I put the comic in. And it came with a print, which I will stick to the wall behind me. Really cool stuff. And next up on my read list is All We Ever Wanted. This is from A Wave Blue World, and there are so many artists and creators in this that I really don't know if I can name them all right now, so I will just say it's got this many writers and artists and creators. That's, that's how many stories there are. And so if you think about how many... Uh, artists, writers, letterer, letterers, colorists, all that involved in that many stories. But it was pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. A lot of different stories of a future instead of um, dystopian futures. These are futures that give you hope. And, uh, well, some there might have been a dystopian here and there. But most of them were, uh, were fairly decent, uh, give you hope kind of different glimpses into a future, like a future that uh, just more interesting. Um, yeah. With uh, different biases and tolerances towards people of different uh, religious backgrounds, lifestyles, all that stuff. So that's pretty much the gist of what they were trying to do with All We Ever Wanted is just different futures where people are more tolerant, more accepting, and, uh, yeah, cool stuff. There's even this one where there is a future without guns, and this one guy 
wanted to take a gun and go shoot his younger self, which was confusing, because you do that, and then you can't go back and shoot your younger self. I don't know. Interesting stuff, though. Really good stuff. So glad I got this book to begin with, because there's a lot of interesting artists that uh, this book introduced me to. And uh, probably led to me back in other stuff. Probably how I got such a huge read pile. Here's some Liana Kangas art. I always love seeing her stuff in stuff. And uh, her books. So, all we ever wanted from A Wave Blue World. I really liked it. And I will continue to back A Wave Blue World stuff because they constantly are putting out stuff that is interesting and good. And uh, I'm loving it. New art styles, new people I haven't met or uh, read before. And uh, they never disappoint. Always check out A Wave Blue World. Um, yep. So, that brings me into my next section. Rent and Arbs Mailbox. What is in my mailbox? I'm about to show you. Rent and Arbs Mailbox. Alright, what do we got in Rent and Arbs Mailbox this week? I just got this one. Today until death. It is the tale of a zombie apocalypse and what a husband and wife will go through. If one of them gets bitten, will you continue on? trying to find, uh, get to the CDC, find a cure for him, whatever, I don't know. I have no idea really what to expect from this book because I haven't read it yet. It's going in the read pile. And I love it. This one is also a Kablam printer. So yeah, love to see my fellow Kablamers. People who love print through them also. So can't wait to get that one in the read pile. Next up that I got is This Land 5. That's a print, homage cover to uh, X-Men, obviously. Giant size X-Men. This is the cover I got. Very cool stuff. This land, number five, is about uh, Maori, Polynesian gods, and stuff like that. Pele's Maui, you know, all that fun stuff. And what, what would be a future where they still existed. So it's a distant future, far from us where these gods are coming back and wondering what the heck is going on with their land. So that's going in the reed pile. Then next up in the reed pile is Area 51, the Helix Project. This is issue 5 of that series. So this one uh, I need to give you a review of soon because I recently read issues 1 through 3. I'm currently issue reading issue 4. So I'm going to have to throw that one into the reed pile let you know what's going on with that. This is about uh, an alien who came to Earth and got killed right in front of his alien son and then the alien son does what he does after that. Revenge, all that fun stuff. Or not so fun stuff, but you know what I mean. Anyway, oh yeah, what else I got in my mail? Berserker Solo Island issue 6. Berserker Solo Island, so good. I'm loving this story. It's a uh, it's very much like a, oh, what do you, what would you say, like a um, Lovecraftian story, Dean Koontz-ish all the way through. It's taking place in the 50s on an island, Berserker's Island, and uh, yeah, good stuff. And I also got in Fractured. This is after reading uh, that Crow book last week, the one that I reviewed last week. Um, I went and sought out more stuff from this artist. I backed a Kickstarter called Monstrous that had this artist in it, and uh, so Fractured, more stuff uh, after reading Crow from the same author as Crow, Pixel Gremlin, so yeah, I checked that one out. Now, we are on to Campaign Corner. What is on Kickstarter, India, go, go, that you should back? Bop, bop, bop. Campaign Corner. All right, so what do we got? in the campaign corner right now as I just reviewed for you make believe make believe one and two when an AR game fills your town with swords and sorcery will you lift up the blade and make believe from the writer of I am group what if Ryan Little brings you make believe one and two it is a hundred and ninety percent funded so 
if you back it right now, you will definitely be getting your make believe issues one and two. Um, so yeah, go on there. You could get both issues one and two together, or if you already have one just like me, get number two. So check out Make Believe right now on Kickstarter. It's on Kickstarter until October 26th. <clears throat> I took a hammer to hell. Number one is on Kickstarter right now. It is a brutal revenge comic in hell with a hammer. Jake made a deal with the devil for his eternal soul. Original, I know. But wait until you read it. This is very different. But instead of wanting of waiting till his time up or trying to wiggle out of this agreement, Jake decides that he is going to go to hell willingly. With nothing more than a massive hammer duct taped to his hand, Jake is going to kill the devil. And uh, add-ons are the cage number one. I think I, I threw on the cage number one because that looked really good uh, from the same team. Um, I also have a book called Chances Are, number one, coming to me that I backed. It was on Kickstarter last month, I think. So check out I Took a Hammer to Hill, number one, on Kickstarter right now. It is 579% funded. And it is on Kickstarter until October 26th. Flip Die, the world's first dice that you flip like a coin. This looked really cool. I normally don't talk about things that are not comics, but this was too cool looking to pass up. I had to check it out. It's, so basically, it's coin you flip, and it's got these holes in it, and a marble shows up in, it could be a, a four-sided die, or a 20-sided die, or a six-sided die, whatever. It could be any side they want it to be, really, because it's a coin. But so the way it works is when you flip it, inside is this pattern, and the marble goes down these pyramids into the hole and it'll fall into a hole with the number 7 by it or 20 and uh, that's how you know what I don't know how to what you use the dice for me personally what I would buy it for is I'd get one of those 20 sided coins to flip and it would help me pick movies when I can't decide and then I'll go 20 from the last movie I watched watch the 20th disc and that's how I'll pick my movie that that way it just takes out the indecision, if you will. And uh, yeah, so it was cool stuff. 20-sided dies, four-sided dies, two-sided dies. Five different sets you can choose from. A dragon set, antique gold, antique silver, and seven realms sets. It is currently 11,000% funded. And it's on Kickstarter till October 28th. It is from uh, people in Provo and Orem. So it's technically local. I'm Utah, up in Riverside, Utah. So yay, go Utah artists. So check out Flip Die, the world's first die that you flip like a coin on Kickstarter until October 28th. The Encoded is a Collected Splintered Souls. The Encoded uh, I reviewed last week on, on last week's video was awesome. And I can't wait to get more. This is the Encoded volume. All of them collected into one. The Breakout Action Packed Seductive Series with a twist on the classic Man vs. Machine theme is now collected into 144 freaking pages volume. It is 97% funded, so it's not quite 100 yet. Get on there, back it, make sure it gets to 100 so that I can get my copy. Until October 28th, the encoded Collected Splintered Souls. Please back it so I can get some. All right, Pele number one is on Kickstarter right now. I love things with Pele in them, like this land, and uh, well, my own comic has Pele in it. Peter Pan the Vampire. Pele is one of Peter Pan's friends. So Hawaii's fire, Hawaii's fire goddess, in her very own series, Pele Honua. Oh my gosh, Pele Honua Mea is one of the most feared and respected gods of Hawaii. Pele is the mother of Red Earth goddess of the volcanoes and is known as she who devours and shapes the land. This story, set in present day, shows Pele wandering Hawaii in a world that she doesn't recognize anymore. Humans have desecrated the islands in the name of progress. Uh, there are some cool covers. Uh, there's a, a Layla Lee's cover. Uh, 
the artist of uh, the last story you'll, the last book you will ever read. So there is a Layla Lee's cover, a Kelly Who cover. Kelly Who was um, in the X Men number two, X Men two uh, movie, fighting Wolverine as. Uh, Oh man, I can't remember her name now. But Kelly Who, awesome. She does a lot of voice work for cartoons too. Uh, she has some voices on the Justice, Young Justice series. So, Kelly Who, she's awesome. Pele number one is 285% funded. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. So Pele number one is on Kickstarter until October 31st. That is Halloween night. I Am Hexed Volume 1 is on Kickstarter right now. You know, I just read that. Awesome story. You should get this whole set right now so you can read it. I Am Hex Volume 1 is the collected volume of all four issues of I Am Hexed from Kirsten Thompson, original comic about the political struggles of modern day witches. It is a project we love on Kickstarter and it is 353% funded. Check it out. I Am Hexed Volume 1 on Kickstarter right now until November 2nd. Reina, the Bastard Queen 1 and 2. This one's new to me, but I'm back in it and I'm going to get issues 1 and 2. Reina's quest for vengeance takes her down a dark new path. It's 24 pages, 185% funded. The art looks amazing. So, uh, so yeah, there's this girl, and she's with a, a group of uh, that have sworn to kill monsters only. And... Uh, she comes back and finds her village desecrated, killed. All her, everybody in her village is killed, and she goes after the people responsible. So check out Reina, the Bastard Queen, issues one and two. So many awesome covers on there too. I mean, I'm telling you, there are some awesome covers. Check it out. 24 pages of awesomeness on Kickstarter until November 5th. Planer Jane number seven is coming out. A modern day story of murder, the final issue of Planer Jane. The story of a seemingly ordinary girl who becomes a brutally efficient killer for hire. Uh, this is a black and white and red occasionally comic. It's 24 to 28 pages each issue. Some of them are longer than others, some of them are short, but I mean this story is awesome. If you ever wondered what Dexter would be like as a teenage girl in high school, uh, just trying to make her way through things, figuring out how to be a hit hitman for hire. And uh, yeah, really cool stuff. Awesome art. I love the aspect of it where it's drawn, but then there's blood here and there. Or there's red signs or the red texts. All different interesting stuff. This one is currently 392% funded. It is awesome. It comes with awesome stickers. I always get uh, Planer Jane stickers to go on my comic book boxes. I love it. Check out Planer Jane, issue 7, on Kickstarter until November 6th. Worlds Away 1 and 2 is on Kickstarter right now. Equipped with the high-tech armor and weapons, a soldier and her daughter fight to escape the clutches of a deadly alien sorceress. It's currently 71% funded. Uh, it needs a little help to get over that hill. So check out Worlds Away 1 and 2 on Kickstarter right now till November 11th. That is one of the comics I just reviewed. Good stuff. The Game issues 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, and 3 are on Kickstarter right now. In the Game of Life, <clears throat> no one's been keeping score until now. From the creators of White Ash and Glarian, Charlie Stickney, Connor Hughes. Oh my gosh, awesome stuff. And uh, this is 48 pages of goodness. I think that issue 2 and 3 are going to be combined into one trade. So check it out. You could get issues 1 with it too. And do the catch up tier. It is 259% funded. So the game 1 through 3 on Kickstarter right now till November 16th. Ooh, November 16th. That's my birthday. So check it out. The game 1 through 3 on Kickstarter right now till November 16th. Lost Boy. Oh man. I mean, seriously, Lost Boy. How can I pass up a comic about Peter Pan? Um, I freaking love Peter Pan, so when I saw this, I checked it out. The artwork looks so amazing. 
Um, it is a father and daughter team working on this comic book, uh, writing the comic, and then uh, the artist does such a good job. It's got a storybook anime kind of childish quality to it, so I'm loving it. Anyway, let me get down to the uh, synopsis here. How a, how a hand became a hook and how a Peter became a pen. But Peter is spelled P-E-E-T-R because in 1700s London, there were these pickpocket kids and they were called Peters because uh, they pilfered pockets. I, I don't know. Anyway, so set in London, early 1700s, a time before police, when public safety relied on thief takers to uh, capture these Peters. So uh, it was in a time before there were police or bobbies or anything like that. And uh, people would come along and say, I will catch these thieves, these kids that are stealing uh, money bags from coaches and carrier carriages. I will catch these guys and I will punish them. And most, most of the time, the people that were catching these thieves were also the people, people that uh, trained the kids how to pickpocket. And... Uh, they caught them just to make it look like they were doing a good job. They got paid, and then, yeah, crazy stuff. So, Tomathan is our main character. He survives as a Peter, a thief who steals bags from moving carriages. This is a 28-page book. Really cool stuff. They have alternate covers, too. Um, regular covers and a gold foil cover. And so one day, this Tomathan, he steals a bag, and it's got a fairy in it. And uh, so the whole story is about him finding a fairy and he goes up against the uh, the thief catcher, the captain, and who knows from there he chops off his hand probably and he becomes Captain Hook. That's what I'm guessing. So, but this is only 58, 54 percent funded. So please jump in this, help it out. Uh, I really, really, really want to get this book. And uh, oh, and also I noticed uh, this is from the same writer that did a comic called Unicorn. And uh, The Mall from Scout Comics and The Source, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I currently have The Unicorn in my read pile and I'm going to read that next Tuesday. So I'll let you know how that goes. But please back Lost Boy so I can get my copy and uh, push it over that 54%, make it 100 It's on Kickstarter till November 18th. Lost Boy. Memoirs of the Reanimator. It... They have a Kickstarter for a figure, a radio drama, and issue one. Um, so check out Memoirs of the Reanimator. The figure looks, oh my gosh, so scary. He's got a, a red skull looking head that pops on and off with the magnets. And uh, he's got a bandaged head and he's got a really scary looking uh, Dr. Jekyll looking kind of scientist face. Anyway, uh, you follow Dr. Herbert West. On his maca macabre, maca macabre. I I have always been flub flubbered up by that word maca macabre, because you know as a reader as a young kid you don't I don't know anyway. Okay, following Doctor Herbert West on his macabre adventures, as his experiments cause utter chaos wherever he goes, beginning in Arkham, Massachusetts. So the add-ons, you could get Lovecraft P.I., which, I mean, I've reviewed that. You could go back through my list and find my reviews for Lovecraft P.I. So good. Uh, Berserker Solo Island, so good also. They have badges and coins, and uh, it is uh, currently funded at 123%. Memoirs of the Reanimator. Figure, issue, and radio drama are on Kickstarter until December Fourth. And coming soon to Kickstarter is Vampire Detective in Space, issue 1 through 3. A vampire Detective solves mysteries with the help of his snarky artificial intelligence companion. So check out that one. As soon as it comes out, I will add it to my campaign corner to let you know more about it. I actually have a bunch of issues of it to read. Not a bunch. Uh, two issues of it that I need to read. But I'm, uh, I'm already planning on backing it, and I will review it pretty soon. I've got some awesome stickers to show you that come with it. Death Tally 1 through 3 is coming to Kickstarter soon. She accidentally killed a Reaper, 
and now she has to replace the Reaper. The story continues further. So I'm new to that one too, so when issues tell Death Tally issues 1 through 3 come out, I will have to back all three issues to catch up and see where it is. So that is the end of my running Kickstarters right now. If you have a Kickstarter going right now, uh, message me, tag me in a tweet. Uh, because I found out a lot of people did message me their Kickstarters way back when on uh, through the Twitter messages. And... It doesn't notify me when I get a message, so I don't see it, and it hides them. So just flat out, just tweet me out, say, hey, Rentnarb, check this one out. Um, I'm at Rentnarb on Twitter, or at Rentnarb Studios on Facebook, and I don't ever open Instagram, but if you want, you can message me on there. Maybe I'll see it. Um, or you can email me at PeterPanTheVampire at Yahoo.com. I've been getting a couple emails for lately from those and uh, gonna add those to the list check them out or I either out back to because I checked them out so check out or let me know what you've got going on Kickstarter campaigns or even if you already if you have a book that's already out you kickstarted it years ago but it's on Etsy or Indie Planet or whatever you can message me and say hey here's the link to this at Rentnarb check it out and uh, throw, throw my name in a tweet if you want. Say, hey, I'm Re at Rednarb, check out my book, it's on Etsy, and I'll go check it out, or Shopify, or whatever. Because I'm always looking for new stuff, even if it's not new to, to you, it's new to me, and uh, I'll give you a review of that. Or you can just send me a free copy if you want, and I will definitely review it. So, uh, I have a Patreon page. If you might be watching this on Patreon. Probably not. And uh, so I've had a Patreon for a while. And uh, I, I've been putting these YouTube videos on there. And uh, what if you back me on the uh, Patreons, what you will get is at the end of each show, I will hold up a card that says, Hey, Gary Brantner, thank you for backing me on the Patreon. These are my Patreon backers right now. And uh, you can follow my Patreon backers at Rentnarb on Twitter or Rentnarb Studios Comics on Facebook. That's what it'll look like, but I don't have any right now to show you because I'm my only Patreon backer. Actually, I'm not because they don't let you do that. Okay, so that looks like the end of my show right now. And thank you for watching this far, and hope to see you next time. If you leave me a message on the, uh, if you leave me a message in the uh, YouTube videos or whatever, uh, I will give you a shout out. I will, I will say, hey, thanks for the comment on YouTube, and uh, read that here, all that fun stuff. And uh, hopefully, I read a comic book. One of the comics I've mentioned inspires you to read that, and. Uh, makes a new fan on that, all that fun stuff. So, thank you for watching Rentnarb Studios Comics.